Greetings. This is Agent Bay. Um, trying to get these videos in as much as possible because time is moving and it's moving pretty rapidly. Um, I wanted to share a couple thoughts about the journey so far and many of the things I'm witnessing uh, in the external world. And I use that specifically because we have an internal world in our mind and then we have an external world in which we engage in. If we're not in alignment with our internal world, then the external world defines our internal. And then we become confused because it's not who we are. That's pretty much it. So what do we... What do we want from our life? What do you want from your life? I was reflecting on a class I gave back um, last year. As I was observing preparation and everything for the class, I'm looking at myself, I'm looking at other people. I started to get some kind of insight with uh, the way people do what they do. And I'm specifically talking about expectations. It's a tricky, tricky thing. When you're internal, when you're not in alignment with your internal world, like I said, the external world will govern that and there will be confusion. You see this a lot on social media. There's a lot of confusion. <laughs> and people doing things because they think it's defining them. They would like the attention, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, some are doing it for marketing, trying to promote a product, a service. Um, and then, you know, you hear people, they get lost in this because they, they are not in touch with their internal world. I'm sure somebody would want to argue with me on this, but I tell you from, from my observation is that you can debate on this all day long, but what I say for the purpose of the argument, find out whether it's true or not true. Don't leave it off to your opinion. Your opinion is unfounded and your opinion is, has, has no actual foundation or substance. Just because you have one doesn't make it true. So, so here's the point. People want to debate, well, I don't know, meditation doesn't work for me. And I'm like, what do you mean doesn't work for you? When you say meditation, what do you mean? I'm curious because I want to understand your process and what was your expectation? Because usually there's an expectation. Oh, I'm meditating for peace. I'm meditating for clarity of mind. I'm meditating for harmony. I'm meditating for joy for all human beings. All right. Great. Is that an expectation or intention? What is an expectation? I'll put it in plain simple terms I want to get something out of it well what happens if you don't <laughs> intention whether you get something or not doesn't change my intention is to climb I'll use let's say my intention is to go to Mount Shasta all right along the way something may occur do I stop because that occurrence came up? No, my intention is clear. I'm going to Mount Shasta. Yeah, so things are going to occur along the way. Big deal. I'm still going to Mount Shasta, period. Expectation looks like this. I'm going to have an amazing time going to Mount Shasta. Some people say, well, isn't that, that's an intention. No, 
you've already went into the realm of duality. And because of that, something good or bad will occur. The question is, when it doesn't go your way, will you lose your way? Yeah, we all intend. I believe we all have some intention for good. Right? And we, but the expectation is every time, every time. It should be good. Life is full of ups and downs. That's just the way it is. You're going to have what we call a good day and what we call a bad day. It's going to happen. Your intention has nothing to do with that. Your intention is bigger than what's good and what's not. So anyway, I hear this argument. Well, I tried meditation. I said, well, stop trying. What? Yeah, stop trying to do meditation. You know, some clever person says, don't try to do meditation. Let meditation do you. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> some people get so clever that they don't have any meaning in their words. I mean, it sounds cute, but it's like, what does that really mean? So anyway, you know, whether they're saying surrender to the process, or they so say that, surrender. So a lot of, so the, the issue is, uh, the issue could be is that the person doesn't have the stamina that it takes to be able to, to do the practice of meditation. Or they have some preconceived notions that when I meditate, I should feel peaceful. Or this is the biggest one. I can't stop my thoughts when I meditate. I'm in Japan. I'm teaching a course. I remember one of the participants said, I'm having a hard time meditating. I was like, oh, great. And she like looked at me like, what? <laughs> I like, no, that's going to happen. So what's what's the situation? I got I got um, um somewhat excited. I was like, yeah, are you're doing you're doing the process. So she she says uh, the thing is, teacher, I can't stop my thoughts. And I was like, hmm. I just sat for a few seconds I observed and said why do you want to stop your thoughts she said isn't that what meditation is for to stop your thoughts and be peaceful I said I'm not sure about that she's like what and I could hear I could almost hear the triggering it's like well, what am I here for what am I doing this course for if I can't stop my thoughts and I said, um, maybe you don't try to stop your thoughts. I think what's happening for you is because you think that it should be like this and it doesn't show this, then you're not, you don't, it's a uh, confusing situation. It's like, it's not stopping my thoughts. And so you're like, you're trying to figure it out. And I said, I get it. And that takes you away from being in meditation. So I said, so let me assist you with this. Because if your expectation is to go into meditation to stop your thoughts, I'm going to tell you right now, that it may not work at all. Because your expectation is going to create the separation for you. It's going to move you out of the state that you're trying to get to. Because you're looking at every second for that to happen. And I'm going to tell you, most likely it won't. So then, therefore, what you say and many other people say is that this this stuff don't work for me. Doesn't work for me. Or the other one is, I don't have time to meditate. This one is a fixed mind saying that this stuff don't, not only does this stuff doesn't work for me, I don't have time to be wasting around sitting, just being still. <laughs> <laughs> because they're looking at this external expression and they're thinking well meditation is you're just sitting there being still well I can do that sitting watching TV or driving in my car uh, TV no not possible not possible at all that's not meditation. <laughs> um, 
That's you watching TV. You feel relaxed? Yeah, okay, all right. So you're relaxed watching TV. But don't, not to be confused at all. Act, uh, meditation is much more, is actually more active than you think. It's not passive at all. You, just because you can't see what's going on doesn't mean nothing's going on. And I think what uh, occurs for a lot of people is that uh, they don't want to face their thoughts that they're having. It's the real deal. So that all these other things are become distractions. Um, you can be in a state of mindfulness, meaning I am aware of what I'm doing while I'm doing it. And I'm fixing my attention purely on when I stick the key into the car, I take a depth breath, I hear the engine, I feel the sensation of the vehicle moving, I'm looking around. I'm, I am bringing my awareness to the space so that I am aware of all the things that are taking place. Yes, that's awareness. Meditation is a process that basically I just say is you observing oneself. And I don't even like to use the word meditation too much because of so many different connotations. I say mind training. You're training yourself, you're training your mind to, to, to contemplate through contemplation and concentration, get, uh, creating the ability for your awareness to be given direction. Not just be aware of all of everything. You're being dis uh, discerning as to what you take in and what you let go. So what are you doing at your thoughts? You're like, hmm. And this is just a process. This is like first level. There's many other levels once you get past being attached to these are my thoughts and these thoughts are my being and this is this being gives me meaning because I generated the thoughts. And when that distraction is put to the side, <laughs> then you start getting really into some uh, levels of work. When you're done being afraid and you're done being angry and frustrated and disappointment, chasing after happiness, looking for sensations of joy, and you're like, oh, I love it. It feels so good. And all you're doing is chasing, chasing, chasing. And yeah, it feels good for how many seconds that it does. And you're not aware of it. So therefore, you just keep doing it. The thing is, is that's not bad. It's just that we are attached to it like that. And so that becomes, it has an aversion, becomes an aversion for us. Even the things that are good for us. The moment that we have it, we be enjoying it. And then 10 minutes later, we start to feel depressed because it's gone. Wait a minute. Why didn't you let the feeling last longer? What shifted? You're thinking. Well, it's gone now. It was great while I had it, but now it's gone. Okay. Yeah, it's gone. Yes. I accept that. All right. So when we get into this chasing of it, then we get into these altered states and then it becomes a problem for us. So anyway, people debate whether, you know, I made a recommendation and the person says, well, I, I, I don't have time for meditation. And it's just, I got a lot going on in my life. And I said, bigger reason to do the meditation. <laughs> get in, get into some time. It's a skill set that wax on, wax off, wax on, wax off. It starts to open your ability to see, observe, digest, discern, contemplate. You see something as it is, and you're like, that's what it is. I'm not going to generate a thought about any more about it. I'm not going to generate a feeling about it. That's what's going on. Got it. Move along. Eventually, there's a per there's a process that when we're going to have to, once we get this ability, what do you do with it? You start purging all the past things that you've been developing that's in your psyche, that's in your cell system, that's in your memory. You start purging that stuff out. Pouring in clear water to remove the dirt. That's basically what you're doing. But most people don't even get to that level because they get stuck at the door that this ain't working for me. 
This ain't working for me. It's taking too much time. All I'm doing is sitting here. I could be doing something else. I got to pay my bills. I got to feed the children. I got to do this, this, that. And, and while they're doing it, they're grumbling inside. I hate this. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> they're not happy or satisfied. So while doing focus, you know, if you're beginning your uh, meditation practice and you're new, the first thing I would recommend is give it time. Well, actually, the first thing I recommend is don't have an expectation. <laughs> don't have an expectation. It's going to get you in trouble every single time. Don't take a meditation course because you're like, my life is in a shambles and I need to meditate. Because your expectation already is, this meditation is going to save me. It's going to give me the peace I'm looking for. The mere thought of having that objective you like put something into the space it's no longer empty anymore you put that into the space and now that's your object your focus point and that's a distraction from what you need to be really doing and many of the basic techniques in the beginning in order for you to develop your ability to concentrate they say breathe in breathe out Breathe in, breathe out. I am focusing on the breath coming in, and I'm focusing on the breath coming out. There's a dense way of just looking at it as well. It's just, I'm, I am aware that I'm breathing. That's dense, meaning that's, it's not really fine-tuned, because what you want to do is, as you're focusing on your breathing, you're going to start looking a little closer Focusing. All right, so I'm out here. I notice that I'm breathing, but how are you breathing? What is the sensation of your breathing? Now you're focusing. You're starting to focus. Breath going in, breath going out. Breath going in, breath going out. Breath going in, breath going out. Hmm. I'm noticing that as the breath goes in, I have a tingling sensation on the nose hairs in my left nostril, but not on my right. Hmm. Interesting. Nothing has to do with good or bad. I'm just looking at it with an equal and positive, not even a positive, but just an equal awareness. Like I'm reading the weather. Hmm. The breath going in, the breath going out. The breath going in, the breath going out. I'm just focusing on that. Something that is consistent and something that is with me. And as you're doing it, you may find yourself appreciating, wow, they were really focused on my breath before. I've never been this still to even focus on that. Wow. Hmm, it's very interesting. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. <laughs> so many people have written me messages. I'm doing it, but nothing's happening. Uh, what do you expect to happen? You're just focusing on your breath going in. One person said, this is a waste of time. Uh, as you see it. <laughs> if you think it's a waste of time, then it becomes a waste of time. If you see it being valuable and meaningful for you, then it's, then it's, it's valuable and meaningful for you. You know, inside there is a hint. You're generating the thoughts. You just got to get that. You are generating the thoughts. I'll leave it with this. We're all born with the mind. Whatever the capacity in which we're aware of it or the state of condition in which it is born into, we all have a mind. It comes with the package. It's like a finger, a hand, an eyeball. We got nostrils and teeth. And they all have a function and they all have a purpose. Just because we don't spend time understanding it doesn't mean 
it doesn't exist or or whatever. I mean, I don't want. I mean, there's thousands of thoughts that people have. I don't know. We know the mind exists because we cannot see it. Well, the question is, who formed that question, and where did that generate from? But it's from my brain. But who's behind? What is that? That is behind the brain. The brain is a functioning tool in which computes information and impulses throughout your body and sends a, you know, reactionary a symbiotic relationship throughout its neural network. And so therefore the brain is now a pool of like a computer pooling thoughts and past experiences. But what about that which is to come? What's generating that? The brain or the mind? Hmm. I'll leave you with